<laughs> the Sopranos is a show with numerous complex and fully realized characters who we can love, hate, empathize with and connect with through a whole range of emotions, in part due to the caliber of the writing of the show and also the quality of the acting. As such, there are characters on the show who have killed people, and yet in certain scenes we're able to feel sorry for them, and there are other characters who have never committed murder and yet we hate their guts. As such, many of the characters in the show have been ripe for my Why You're Wrong About series, a set of videos where I like to offer alternative takes on established characters. It's a great mental exercise for myself as well as a topic for discussion in the comment sections and it allows me to vent my frustrations when I feel a character has not been given his dues and just deserts by audiences. Examples include Why You're Wrong About Bobby Bacala, AJ Soprano, Little Carmine and Ralph Cifaretto. I was wondering, who would be the most difficult Sopranos character to offer a sympathetic case for? Some might say Phil Leotardo, but it's actually quite easy to see his side of things as I argued in my video The Case for Phil Leotardo. Ralph Cifaretto is surely a strong candidate, a man who beat a pregnant young woman to death, but even he does get something of a redemption arc in his final episode. No, the most difficult man to argue for, even though I'm going to try and attempt that today, is this guy, Richie Aprile. Now I know what you're probably thinking, come on Signorante, Richie Aprile, are you running out of ideas? But hear me out. The brother of former acting boss Jackie Aprile, Richie comes out of prison after a 10 year stint and immediately is a source of tension for the new boss Tony Soprano, circumventing authority and refusing to be reined in. Something of a precursor to the likes of Phil Leotardo, Richie seems like a Napoleonic bitter man stuck in the past. He makes a move against Tony but before he can act, is shot dead by his fiancée Janice Soprano. Richie is considered by many to be the scariest character in the show. Manson lamps aside, there's just something about the guy that radiates terror and fearlessness. He's got this 1000 yard stare but instead of it being inflicted by trauma, it looks like he wants to inflict trauma, wants to eat your children. There's something quite aggressive about the man, even in his first meeting with Tony and Christopher, there is an aura of him trying to put his foot down and assert his authority. But the issue for Richie is, he doesn't have any authority, and he doesn't really add anything of value in terms of the DeMeo family. He's not respected, as Junior says, nothing will be lost from not having him around, as Silvio says. So characters don't like him and audiences are freaked out by him, but I was re-watching season 2 in anticipation of a season by season review of the show and I found myself marginally sympathetic to many of Richie's woes. So here goes. Of course, it has to be acknowledged that there's something up with the guy. Tony asks him if he's gotten laid yet after doing a 10 year bit and he says, I'm trying, I'm trying. He gets a blowjob with the lights out. It's him who lubricates Junior's arm to get it out of the sink instead of it being done by Junior's own niece who's right in the room. His fetishist, bizarre and downright disturbing method of having sex with Janice by pointing a sometimes loaded gun to her head while she pumps up his ego. Who does the hanky panky with Janice with the lights on anyway? Janice at one point says that because of Richie's experiences in prison, he's sensitive to the plights of women? Wait what? There are no women in prison. What does that mean? Unless… So there is something there, something under the surface, events that may have occurred in the can, perhaps exacerbated by the idea that Richie's own son might be catching, not pitching. What happened to that man in the can, as Tony says at one point, and he just did 10 years, he's got a right to be a little fucked up, as Paulie remarks. I'm not saying Richie's internal issues and whatever he experienced on the inside count for him or against him when it comes to empathising with the man, but it's not as if a guy like this is going to see a psychiatrist so his problems forever remain unsolved. It would be interesting in finding out what exactly he was like before he went inside. By and large it suggested he wasn't exactly a savoury character before he did time and prison seems to have amplified his attitude problem. So here he is, back on the street having been sent away in the 80s, completely unrehabilitated, angry at the world for moving on without him, angry at the fact that any advantage he thought he might have had with his brother as boss is gone. He's got no businesses, no money, some kid who he helped out in the past is now running the show and seeing us shrink on the side. So can you blame him for being frustrated? 
These guys were sold alive when they went inside. In order to protect the men at the top, the bottom feeders of the mob have illusions of honour and grandeur that when they come out they will be celebrated. But the reality is that guys like Richie, Feech, Lamana and Phil Leotardo are considered irritating distractions by the new younger guys running the show who see them as out of touch, their methods dated and their scope narrow. Richie is so out of touch, he is bamboozled when he learns you cannot talk to the boss about crime directly, and rather than recognise the intelligence behind this decision, he sees it as an affront, a showcase that Tony Soprano thinks he's too big for Richie. And he'll also have the insecurity of knowing, had he not gone away, he'd have been a contender for the throne. As he says to Junior, I gotta meet Tony at the mall, you here, what the fuck is happening? He needs time to adjust and get with the times. As he says, he's from the old school. I mean, the man gets out of prison and the first thing he does is beat someone up in a vicious manner. It's like he focused all of his frustration and rage against the weaker Beansy, who as a civilian would have no hope of help from the likes of Tony Soprano, no real tangible help. His treatment of Beansy is probably his most horrific behaviour. The way he relentlessly and repeatedly goes after him, crippling him and even threatening him afterwards is deplorable. But it's possible the beef is justified, it's just that Richie's methods are too extreme and of a different era. First off, Beansy may be a likeable character but let's not forget this guy was a heroin dealer and he was put into action by Richie. He doesn't see him when he went away, he doesn't see him when he gets out, why not just throw Richie a bone somewhere along the way, especially when you know what he's like. And I know you'd want to distance yourself from a guy like Richie Aprile, but he went away for 10 years, not 20. So Beansy would know that somewhere down the line, this angry little man is going to come knocking. The relationship between Richie and Beansy is not fully explained, but it's possible he and his brother set Beansy up to allow him to earn and eventually prosper with his multiple stores. But with the April crew almost dissolved after Tony takes out junior loyalists in season 1, Beansy now kicks up to Tony and is enjoying his success. It kind of symbolises and personifies Richie's frustration that everything he was working on has been taken away and now is in the hands of that kid, Tony. With prison, his brother's death, Junior's crew being wiped out, he was dealt a bad hand. And he wasn't always mental with the way he handled things. The talk with Chris was done right. Chris is a non-made man. It's done in front of the boss. He gives a clear warning to Chris not to hit Adriana until he marries her. They shake hands. Richie praises Chris to Tony. Boom. Done. Sorted. By the way, did you notice that Richie hits Janice before actually marrying her and is then killed? Nice bit of ironic foreshadowing there. Is it possible that a man who causes as much frustration, insubordination and dysentery in the ranks as Richie could be controlled if controlled in the right way? I actually think it's possible. It's more convenient to take him out, yeah, and he doesn't add much to the family in terms of money, but the guy could be an asset. I rather enjoyed the rare opportunity to see Tony and Richie work together when they're both berating Davy during the bust out and when Richie gives Tony information on the Bevilacqua kid. In another world, these two would have made a good team. But Tony's lack of leadership skills is as much of a reason for Richie's behaviour as is Richie's inability to move on and instead hang on to the past. Initially, Richie actually shows major signs of settling into the family. Yeah, he's disgruntled, but about halfway through the season, he seems to pull his trousers up and get on with it. At the start, he says things to Tony like, it feels disrespectful, and what's mine is not yours to give me. He doesn't feel like he's getting his dues, he's approaching the situation from a different angle. He approaches Junior with the implication to move against Tony, saying, you tell me this is the way it is, then so be it. You tell me otherwise, then I'm yours, Junior. And that kind of sums Richie up, really. If he could respect you, as he did Junior, if he could be managed, made to feel regarded, he could be contained. But Tony couldn't manage him, so couldn't contain him. It was his first real nemesis as boss and he was struggling with it. It even affected his panic attacks. But going back to what I was saying, Tony lays down the law to Richie heavily in the shopping mall and Richie does take it, he backs down. Richie even offers him breakfast, he keeps his cool saying to each his own when Tony massively disrespects him by saying there are men better looking in the can than having to hook up with Janice. I gotta say, the guy did fight his natural instinct to stab Tony, and after a brief teething period, 
We only really see Richie coming back from shopping with Janice and being out and about among civilians, with whom, I might add, Richie was always good and polite with. It doesn't say much, as many of the mobsters were, but there you go. He was cordial with David's son, the people at the party. Maybe that's why it stung so hard with him when he learns Tony doesn't want him around his kids, in that Richie is offended that Tony thinks he will do something to AJ. During much of season 2, before one particular scene, it's actually Tony who keeps coming up with snide remarks around Richie. What brings you to an English-speaking neighbourhood? I was wondering why these squirrels went quiet. Little things here and there that you just don't say to a guy like Richie who won't take it as breaking balls. How is saying, I don't know if your parole job at the fish market is going to cover the cost of a new house, after you stopped him selling coke on garbage routes, gonna keep the man in line, you stopped him selling the coke, leave it at that, don't rub it in. Maybe that's why Richie went back to selling. I think one of the issues with Richie is that it can be argued many of his quote unquote innocent actions could have ulterior motives. Maybe he did want to rekindle old flames with Janice. Maybe he was actually trying to get closer to the boss position. At one point Richie says to Tony, how's your sister? And he gets offended, only to find Richie was being genuine. Well, apparently. Does he reprimand Chris in front of Tony as respect for Tony or to undermine Tony? He gets close to Livia and brings her flowers, but is this some sick plan to suffocate Tony by inserting himself into the boss's life? He tells Tony to back off in a firm but forward manner, all due respect, but at the same time he has a potential weapon in his hand. But that's part of the problem, you never quite know where you stand with Richie April. But having done a rewatch, honestly I don't see Richie being sneaky in many of his actions, he isn't even smart enough. There's an element of it, yeah, he tests the waters, he has these comments like when Junior asks him what he's gonna do and he replies, whatever you tell me, and there is a pause. But for the most part, he's just an asshole. But there is sincerity in his assholery. The guy has an attitude about everything and he tries to get his little victories like when he messes about Beansy's wife with the ramp, but he still tends to do the job in the end. And he's actually wronged many times. In spite of this, it does seem like he is slowly becoming used to Tony being boss. I mean, look at the way he dealt with Davies Scatiano. Yeah, he was wrong to bust into Tony's game and ruin it. But he asks Davy if he's sure about wanting to bet, and when Davy fails to pay up, he is a lot calmer than when Tony came to collect. The way he deals with it is actually pretty cool but firm, saying, No good, Davy. Don't take this personally, but I don't want to see your face in any of my games until you're caught up. A guy hands you a light envelope, it's just the beginning. Nothing personal? I know, it's just a stutter step. The beef was legit. But he saw red at Tony's game and went around his problem in his usual anarchic, explosive way. Again, he feels screwed over when Tony doesn't bring Davy out. He shows that by spitting, but again, he still accepts the decision. And later, he even apologises for it at the funeral. On a side point, it shows how small-minded Richie is when he is only thinking about the 8k he is owed by Tony, when Tony has a potential complete bust-out of Davy's entire business in the back of his mind. Kind of shows you how narrow-minded these old-timers were when they got out of prison. He also gets screwed over by Dick Barone with Jackie Senior's old roots. Richie has less roots than anyone, learns he is being charged more than everyone else, and brings his grievances to Tony only to essentially to be told to do one and just roll the costs downhill. Then there's the jacket. As a gesture of goodwill, Richie gives Tony a jacket he took off that cocksucker Rocco de Mayo. Again, some might think there's an ulterior motive here. Is this a power move of some sort? Or is Richie genuinely proud of this great moment in his life where he got this important trophy? Honestly, there's a lot to be said about the jacket scene and I want to tackle it in another video given this vid's length. But in short, I think Richie was being genuine here, as proven by how crushed he was when he saw the Sopranos maid's husband wearing the thing. And in the same scene, he bought some food for Carmela that he cooked. He even brings up the jacket again with Janice, highlighting how hurt he was by Tony's rejection. He might not like the guy, but he does respect the position of boss and gave something that was close to his heart. Really, where it all started to turn for Richie was his conversation with Janice in the car. Gotta wonder where she is in all of this, my little niece. She's the one who wound him up, played him in order for him to make a move on Tony so she could become the new boss's mob wife. She basically did to Richie what her mother did to Junior in season 1. 
In the car, she tries to stir shit. He tells her to drop it and reminds her that Tony put him back in action and gave him 50k. She undermines the gesture by saying her dad gave someone 50k 30 years ago and even male men make more. Then there's the scene where they're getting funky and rather than be lost in the passion of the moment, she's still going this asshole with the games, saying, you're the best, it should be you. She tries so hard to manipulate him to play on his insecurities and ego and he even calls her out on it, reminding her that he needs to be loyal to his capo, that without that they crumble. You can see him fighting against his instinct. He would love to have a go at Tony, but chooses to stop himself. And that's commendable. But who knows how many conversations the two had where we didn't see, where Janice chipped away at Richie. Lady Macbeth used any chance she could get to piss in his ear, like her complaining about money after Richie stops being allowed to sell coke. And when he does start to turn the gears and approaches Junior again to try and turn him, he couldn't fucking sell it and Junior immediately recognises Janice's handiwork, knowing she's involved, and warning Richie against her. Richie tries to turn him again with the coke on the truck route, and we all know how that goes. Junior ended up being smarter than all of them, waiting things out until he saw that Richie didn't have the moxie and sold him out. So there's poor Richie, wound up by Janice, going to Junior who he respects and trusts, he gets pumped up by both Janice and Junior and then Junior leaves him in the wind and Janice literally delivers the final blow by taking him out. The poor guy. And he does yoga. Honestly, having rewatched season 2, I really think Tony could have done things differently. Subsequent seasons of The Sopranos would show how much of a poor boss he was with the way he handled the Vito situation, with the way he handled Christopher, Carlo and many other Soprano underlings. Maybe he just wrote off Richie as a liability after the Beansy incident. But I gotta say, Tony didn't treat the guy very well throughout the season and could have handled the man better, maybe even turn him into an asset for the family. He had a big problem with the guys who came out of the can, unable to reinstate them into the family successfully, like Tony B and Feech. Many of these guys who did decades were shafted by the younger guys. So there you have it. I do actually think there's a few more points that can be made, but this video is getting a bit long in the tooth. So now that you've heard my argument, do you think Ruchi April deserves another chance from Sopranos fans? Or do you think I just couldn't fucking sell it and this video is a sad commentary? Let me know in the comments below, subscribe to the channel and thanks for watching.